So I just got out of the Maker's Lab at Harold Washington Library in Chicago, and it was awesome. Um, way more work than I thought it would be, and uh, definitely a toss-up whether it was worth it to uh, print it instead of buying the little accessories for the OP1, but the experience was really cool. I'm really glad I did it, and this library is fantastic. The Harold Washington Public Library in the heart of downtown Chicago has had a 3D printing lab called the Maker Lab, which has been open to the public for over three years. The lab consists of four 3D printers, several laptop computers, and a couple of laser engravers as well. They offer free workshops to walk you through and teach you how to use the facilities, as well as open lab hours where you can work on whatever projects you like under the guidance of several on-site experts. It's so crazy and awesome that this thing even exists. <laughs> During open lab hours, there is a $2 an hour charge for the print time of your projects. They apply this charge right to your library card, so you can just pay for it the next time you pay off your overdue fines. So let's get to the OP1 accessories. I accidentally downloaded the free CAD files for these accessories directly from TeenageEngineering.com. Here's the link. The files come in three different formats, but I ended up using the .stl files. I was able to log into my email and download them onto the library's computer. We use the MakerBot software, which is free to anyone, and although it has some limitations, it was perfect for this project. So when you first open the file, you have to make sure that you orientate the object correctly. There are a lot of things to consider here, such as how the object will move, and whether it has moving parts, as well as where it will need the most material to support the overhangs while it's being built. The overhangs are the parts of the object that hang above the build plate with nothing to hold it up. And the support material is temporary layers of plastic that support the object while it's being built, and then you remove that after you're done printing. So for the OP1 crank, we decided to build the crankshaft upside down and the crank handle upside down as well to reduce the amount of overhang as much as possible. We used PLA, or polylactic acid, as our source material, which is pretty cheap and it's biodegradable as well. So for the crank, each of the two pieces took between 20 and 30 minutes to print. When we finished the first print run, we realized that the opening that attaches the crank to the OP1 knob was a little bit too small, and the hole that attaches the handle to the crank was also too small. So, we used an electronic caliper to measure the knob and compare it to the 3D printed objects, and then we went into round two. This time, when we set up the file, we adjusted the size based on our calculations, and we slowed down the printing speed to get a little bit more accuracy. Another hour later, and we were in business. Uh, the piece fit perfectly over the knob of the OP1, and the handle fit onto the crankshaft as well. The handle was a little bit stiff at first, but after some time, it became easy to crank. So from start to finish, it took about two and a half hours. Uh, it was really interesting to see these printers in action and to create something that I could actually use in the real world. The staff at the Maker Lab were super friendly and had so much knowledge about using these machines, uh, but they were also just as fascinated with my OP1 as I was with the 3D printers. I can't wait to go back and print some more accessories. Thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you want to see more of this.